You're watching System for Survival in the 21st Century with Dr. Ron C. Smith on the System for Survival Digital Video Network. there are some who are struggling with hematological disorders. There's lupus. There's Hodgkin's disease. There's sickle cell disease. There's cervical cancer. There are hematological, oncological, neurological, urological disorders. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray tonight that you will come and touch your people who are struggling. And then, Lord, we're praying for men and women that are battling with financial problems. We come for our parents. We come for our loved ones. We come, O oh Lord, because there are problems in our existences, and we need to be liberated by the power of God. Tonight, O oh Lord, I pray for people who are battling with illnesses. We don't know what the illness is, Lord, but it could be hypertension, or it could be diabetes, or type 2 diabetes, or juvenile diabetes. It could be elevated cholesterol. It could be epilepsy. It could be asthma, it could be all manner of dementia and Alzheimer's, it could be colon cancer, breast cancer, or prostate cancer, maybe pancreatic cancer, neurological disorders. It's being drawn through the blood, through the dust, with vile curses. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. What God is saying here is worship the creator of heaven and earth. Worship him as the one who made you. The fourth commandment speaks to this generation. Honor thy father and thy mother. In an age when children no longer obey their parents, when a kid says to his parents, you can't tell me what to do. The fifth commandment speaks with relevance. Thou shalt not kill at a time when nuclear weaponry is being built to kill people, at a time of abortion on demand, at a time when snipers kill innocent children. There is still a commandment that says, life is sacred, thou shalt not kill and he shall reign forever and ever. Let me ask a question again. When Jesus comes, the great controversy is going to end. Do you believe that? All the hell you're going through tonight is coming to a screeching halt. Sin and sinners will be no more. Jesus' is, Jesus is coming is not some mysterious event. The Bible is clear in its teaching. He comes to reign over the entire universe. He comes to be worshipped and praised by the redeemed forever and forever. Now there are two very important questions that many people ask concerning the second coming. First and foremost they ask, how will Jesus come back the second time? Secondly, how can I know that I'll be ready when he comes? You know, the Bible gives some very clear answers to both questions. God's end time plan is revealed in his word. The Bible is very plain. Jesus describes one of the deceptions before his return this way. In other words, if anybody says Jesus comes secretly to a select few or he's appearing someplace anywhere on the earth, we can know, we can know that these claims are absolutely false. Someone may say he's, he's in Tokyo or he's downtown Bridgeport or he's in New Haven or some, some nearby city that you're familiar with. Some will say, here he is, or there he is. The Bible is clear. Do not go running off after them. Luke 17, 24 says, 
For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. What I'm trying to say is, Christ won't suddenly appear on a talk show in New York or as a miracle worker on the streets of Paris. He won't walk down some major street in this world. He won't hold up his hand saying, hey, I'm the Messiah. The Bible is clear. His coming is like lightning which flashes and lights up the sky. Christ is coming down from above. He won't rise up from below. Christ's coming is with glory. But someone says, Ron, is it really necessary to understand all of this? We conjecture, if I love Jesus, isn't that enough? Let me explain something tonight, ladies and gentlemen, without being overbearing. Let me just explain the best I can. Satan attempts to deceive people, and many are deceived. As a matter of fact, he's the great deceiver. That's part of his nickname. He counterfeits the truth to lead millions astray. But did you know that Jesus clearly reveals his plan? Let me share with you some very clear facts about the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want you to be clear. You might want to take a mental note of everything I'm saying tonight. Did you know that Christ's coming will be a literal event? Acts, pause and become a savior. A savior is what I am. Oh, Gomer's name. You know, after she got out there, I think that Hosea kind of thought, well, all right, Lord, I did it. Been there, done that. I married her. She put me through hell. She gone now. Hallelujah. By the way, by the way, she left him with all those kids. He was praying again. I'm in chapter three now. Well, you're going to enjoy this book when you read the whole thing through. Now it's going to be a novel. You ain't going to be able to stop. Hosea! Yes, Lord. I want you to go get your wife. What? Go get your wife. But, Lord, you don't understand. What? The Northeastern Conference is talking. The members of BT and even some of the folk at Calvary. The members are whispering. And you know, Lord, I, I've got grounds. I read my church manual. I've got grounds, Lord. Fornication, adultery, you said it yourself. Lord says, Hosea, huh? Go get your wife.
Danielle, Madison, Vincent, and Josiah. Because you love Jesus, we now see pride and privilege to baptize you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. as I teach tonight that the book of Revelation from which I speak a lot from you know a lot of people are afraid to preach from the book of Revelation they rather preach on Matthew Mark Luke and John they rather preach sweet gospel stuffs of Jesus healing sick folk and lifting their burdens and, but you know something that's good too but the book of Revelation is loaded is pregnant with data and information that can change and foster enhanced livelihood even in the city of Bridgeport. Did you know that Revelation is a book of endings? You know what that means? We can only understand the book of endings if we understand the book of beginnings. The theme of true worship, remembering the creator, is a common thread throughout the Bible. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most important themes of scripture. The heart of Revelation's final crisis is over the issue of true and false worship. If you hear me so far tonight, say amen. Why did God say remember? I'll tell you why. He knew we would forget. He knew in an age of evolution, men and women would forget the Sabbath. So God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling us back to his eternal sign of creation. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, and in it you shall do no work. Notice he didn't say a seventh day is the Sabbath. He said the seventh day is the Sabbath. And just as the day before your birthday and the day after your birthday, do not commemorate the day you were born, the first day, the third day, or the fourth day, do not commemorate the birth of the earth by the Creator God. He tells us why we are to worship on the seventh day. Exodus 20 verse 11, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ten Commandment law quotes Genesis and leads us back to when God created the earth. I want to be clear in my teaching tonight, the Sabbath was never an exclusively Jewish institution as many people declare. His grace will make you a brand new man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all that Christ needs to do about salvation has already been done. That contract has already been, re been renegotiated once and forever. The prodigal has already been summoned home. He or she who has fallen is now given away to be lifted up. Somewhere, the load is going to lift. Somewhere, the burdens you carry are going to drop. Somewhere, the sun is going to shine forever. Somewhere, the crooked ways that cause you headaches are going to be made smooth. All you need to do is respond to the salvation God has already provided.